deconvolution was a sharpening or a deconvolution and sharpening in combination together. Welcome to another episode of this series. And I know it's long and I know that I want to cover everything here. This is a series, of course, for people who start out with all this thing. It's not something where you get a quick fix for something and you can jump in and out and have it directly. That's not my target here. My target here is textures. And with that, I want to give you a broad overview about this subject of reproductional photography. And when you have listened to other series of mine, like Panorama or HDI, then you know that's a complete different subject. And the more you can differentiate between or among these series and technologies or techniques, then you have a clearer picture about each and everything. And that's part of my idea why I try to give you a lot of information so you can differentiate in a better way. Just to know something is maybe only half the deal. To know what it is and what it doesn't is, that's from my point of view the right deal. And to know what is deconvolution, that's of course something that you might know already from crime stories. When someone says enhance and you know already this is maybe a little bit over the top that is maybe possible in five or six years if at all but we can differentiate there in two different ways and here we have it again the differentiation one time it is to figure out what happens to the poor picture and certainly when the hubble telescope was shot in the space and the mirror was a little bit off the scientists knew already what went wrong so they do not have to figure it out, but they had to apply the reverse engineering trick to the whole picture to get this problem as much as possible out to get some usable pictures. And the convolution is pretty much when we would use a Gaussian blur on a picture, this method would figure out how large the Gaussian blur was and then tries to find a way to get back to the original picture. That's complicated and it doesn't work all the time, I have to tell. But it's a nice option and it doesn't integrate new colors or brightness values or artifacts even. And if you use it wrongly, it uses artifacts finally as well. <laughs> Sharpening is something that is very critical. It's perfect for printing because there it gets nearly invisible based on the high resolution that you have then on the paper for anything in textures that can be must be dangerous and so i think it's very important to know exactly what's going on here and before i go further i want to give you a little example have a look to this image here please and compare please the right and the left side with each other in terms of brightness so which one is darker which one is less bright <laughs> The truth is, of course, pretty simple. Hold a finger in front of your eye so that this middle part here is not visible at all. Okay, you get it. It's exactly the same brightness. And I show you what I can do here. This is now a gray strip just on top of each other. And you see it goes here seamlessly. It's just the same color. And we can measure this, of course. And this is the corn sweet illusion. Here another version, if your monitor is maybe too dark, then this might be the better version of it. And here again, just a gray strip on top of it and everything is equal. And you can see this here when I go here in the info palette over the picture, there is no change in RGNB. And when I switch this off, you can see that as well. And here I go a little bit lower and then I go higher and then lower again. Same happens with the other image. All the time 90 and then here in the middle we have some changes and then back to 90 all the time. And the stripe here is then 90 as well. A wonderful illusion. Why, why do I show you that? Because this is pretty much what happens to standard sharpening. What I would think of the cheaper version or the cheating version of sharpening because it takes exactly a difference value where it finds an edge that's because the difference is there bright to white 
perhaps not in this picture and then it takes the brighter part and makes it a little bit brighter even here on the edge and the darker part on this area here as well darker and then we get the illusion we have a higher sharpness in the picture and here we get even fooled we can see that the same color appears based on this little area here a little bit brighter here a little bit darker so to give you a little bit more about sharpening before we go to deconvolution i take here an image where i have a certain amount of values on the left and a certain amount of values on the right and i take now here just a selection and then i go here to filter and to sharpen and i don't want to go here into each and every detail of these guys but i go here for example into unsharp mask and here we can see here already what we get the amount is way over the top 500 percent and the radius here is just 4.7 let's make it five pixels and when we normally go here with sharpening to work we get here maybe something like that a little bit but not too much sharpness here so what i want to do here is of course to show you the effect and what it does to the image and here with 163 we can see here already the changes and i want to show you that of course i click ok and then i go here to channels and i go to these guys here i go again here a little bit larger and you can see here we have already that change it gets darker here and it gets brighter here that's in the green channel the red channel is even worse and in the blue we can't really notice something but there is a little bit and all in all we get here something that looks a little bit more yellowish and here in the blue we have a change it's a little bit sharper but not that much okay back to work here so we leave this where it is and then i use another one and i go here to sharpen and to smart sharpen this is then an area where we have and that's a suspicion i couldn't find really proof material about this that the amount finally gives first a little bit deconvolution and then it mixes more and more the sharpen area into it that finally creates something artificial here as well i go here over the top to make clear what happens we have more options here and remove means here for example lens blur that would be the classical deconvolution part because lens blur is something that is more than often the target point of the deconvolution gaussian blur means that we have a nice curve of gray here when when we would look from the side and it goes where the edge is on the highest point and then it smooths out the sharpness or here this effect the radius by itself gives me here the wideness of that effect so when i go brighter it starts very heavy here and then it goes smoothly out like a gauche gaussian blur here of course and I leave this here as well at 5 pixels and let's say 160 we had before something like that and I say OK. So same procedure here and I will not do this too often just for the purpose of comparison. We have not that big of a value here. This is relatively comparable on the left side but not really and it's also not so much here on the right side and the red is also not so from my point of view there is a mixture of methods in it when we take the same values or similar values and then we can go here maybe to our last version and there are of course many many more ways to do that and many many more filters here for example sharpener pro output sharpener and so on I tend to use more than often the in focus, which is really a deconvolution filter. And I reset this here for a moment, make this bigger so you can see that. I start here normally exactly with this kind of setting. Nothing is really active here. We can change the blur type out of focus, straight motion. That means when we have a motion and we know a motion angle, it 
suggest that we can get it out, but it's not really the truth. I'd stay here in generic and what I do normally, and maybe you have a different way of dealing with this stuff, I go here with the blur radius higher and higher until I get artifacts. And here that's maybe too blurry. <laughs> I do not get any artifacts here. And I go here back and forth and spacebar down gives me here the original and then back. You can see it tries to figure out what happens here. It does not really introduce here some areas, but I go a little bit back here and then we can add the older or the cheaper versions of it. That is here sharpness, which gives me here immediately some colorizations in my edge and the micro contrast introduces something similar, but not that much. I leave this out here because I want to have only a pure deconvolution. I set it here to five, hopefully it does it, and click OK. I go to my channels again. I can see here only a tiny little bit because we increase the contrast, but it's very small. And it's maybe not so effective because we look with a different contrast here. And so that's maybe less the case that it appears sharper here, but I can see a clearer edge here. I use the command D to get rid of that. And what I want to do is, of course, to make that more visible here, I go to levels and then let's have a look. We have here an edge and there. Let's have a look if I can get a little bit more of that. And now you can see here we have a lot of extra color now inside of <coughs> our picture. Excuse me. And we have here less of an effect. And this is more or less that we get the old color back from the straight line here. What we can do here now is, of course, to just go here and I grab a selection and go back here with blur to undo what I just have done. That is of course nothing that we normally would do. And I put here again five of these guys in, five pixels wide. And then I can see after I blur this here, the deconvolution area is nearly untouched in terms of color variations. But the first one where we had only the yeah contrast increased edge here, there we have extra color in it. And that's of course not nice. And when you have motion blur or something like this in your scene, this really is something that I wouldn't like to have. And so the idea is of course have the least amount of post-production on a texture and the least amount of change in the picture because any change of values, color values, will give you on the end a different result when you move the camera in the scene in Cinema 4D on the end. That's nothing that I think is something nice to have. And two little tips more. First of all, before you even think using sharpening, there should be an denoise operation because noise can be part of the sharpening process because the algorithm are not all that clever and say, oh, there's noise, ignore it. But here's an edge, we use it. Sometimes the noise comes even heavier out after sharpening. And so first denoise, then sharpening. And there are some algorithm who goes directly inside of the raw material and sharpen there. And they should have, of course, also first a denoise on it or just ignore noise and then you are nicely off. The second tip from my point of view is if you can do it, and it's part of the next uh, series here, that we sh overshoot. We shoot a higher resolution, maybe with stitching images together, like in a panorama area, but in a different way. I will explain this. And then we just scale it down. Because when we have maybe just for example 10,000 by 5,000 pixels and we scale this down to 5,000 by 2,500 which would be our target size, then we have a much higher precision in the picture based on 
no sharpening artifacts because we have really dealt with material that was there and we get something that I would call oversampling. And that works of course nicely. So just one more little tip and I want to show you that what happens when the colors are changing on an edge. And so I go here to my Unsharp Mask for example where I get the most artifacts and you can see here already what happens. I get a lot of artifacts here and then it vanishes out. And then I start here again to get some more. And I overdo this now and I overdo this here. So you can see really that would be the case if you zoom in in your picture. Here everything is white. I hope the compression isn't eating it away. And then we have here that black border. This is way over the top, I know. I do this here just to make it visible and threshold to zero is certainly with noise in the picture not a good idea. So when the colors are a little bit more apart from each other, 70 levels for example, then it makes maybe more sense. But even then you get a lot of stuff here. 500 is also over the top and here you can see we get nearly nothing and then I have to go deeper in and a little bit more and a little bit and here it starts again. This is not what we want to have. As I have shown, when this gets blurry, we have a problem here. Deconvolution does not or shouldn't introduce new colors in the picture. I think I have made my point. If you urgently need to sharpen something, please keep all of that in mind. If it is really improving your quality, make a test rendering with one time sharpening, one time without and you will see which one works the best. Thanks for listening. Have fun with it. Bye bye.